Today we're going to build an SDXL powered AI image generation app using SDXL and Bubble. I just found this really nice prompt that's related to a high resolution photo of a spider and I'm going to click submit on this and what's going to happen is we're going to call the replicate API which is a third party service that's going to run the SDXL model based on the parameters that we specified here. It's then going to send the output image back to our Bubble app and it's gonna show up on our screen in front of us. And you can see there a really nice high quality image. So I'm gonna go through how to set up your bubble app to achieve this. I'm also gonna show how you can use the image and mask fields to really fine tune your image generation. So if we refresh our page and we look at some of the images I've downloaded, you can see here, I have this photo of, of a dog. And let's say I wanted to change this photo of a dog to a photo of a cat, but keep the overall image quite similar. What you can do is you can use a thing called a mask where you're only specifying a certain part of the image to be changed by the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that image of a dog and I'm going to drop that into my image field. And then I'm going to get the mask field or the mask image, I should say, and drop that into the mask uploader. And then if I just change my prompt to a image of a cat sitting on a bench and click submit. We're once again going to use the XCL model to generate our output image. You can see here it's loading at the moment. And when it's been fully generated in the background, it's going to send it back to our bubble app and we get that output right in front of us. And if we compare that maybe to our dog image, you'll see it's almost identical, except for that part in the middle that we specified we want to change with the mask. So I'm going to go through all of that. Before we start building out workflows in our bubble app, you're going to need to sign up for an account on Replicate Com. Replicate is a really cool service that allows you to run a bunch of AI and ML models, which you can do so via their API. So if you click on the sign in button, you'll be asked to sign in with a GitHub account. So you're going to need to sign up for a GitHub account first, which will in turn let you sign in to Replicate. Once you've registered for a Replicate account, you will have access to this dashboard area. Please note that Replicate is a paid service. You will need to add funds by your credit or debit card in order to use it. So now that we've registered for a Replicate account, we can start doing things in our Bubble Editor. Before we start dropping elements in, we're going to need to install a plugin. And the plugin we're looking for is the Replicate AI and ML Models plugin, which is a paid plugin developed by myself, Crown for Tech. So you need to buy this plugin or subscribe to it on a monthly basis. Once you've subscribed or added that plugin to your Bubble app, you're going to see we have a bunch of fields down here and we need to do some brief API configuration before we actually start dropping in elements and creating the UI. So I'm going to fill out these two fields here, the API key dev fields, and the way I'm going to fill these out here, I'm going to go back to my replicate dashboard. I'm going to go to this drop down menu here. I'm going to go to API tokens and I'm going to copy this API token in. And then I'm going to type in the word token, a space and paste that value in. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the second API key dev field. And then we're done. For security reasons, I'm going to change this API token after this tutorial, but that is what it would look like, albeit if you'll have your own token instead of mine. This is for the development version of the app, these two keys. When you're deploying it to live, you will want to do the exact same thing for the two API key fields at the very top here. Okay, so now that we have done all that, let's go back to Replicate and make a prediction first of all in our Replicate UI, and then we can do something similar in Bubble. We're going to be using the SDXL model today from Stability AI, and you can see here there's a bunch of prompts, and we can type in various values, which will in turn spit out an image on the right hand side here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another prompt that I had before. This one is relating to a Japanese programmer working in an office with an alien behind him. So I'm going to paste that in there. You can see that's the text. I'm not going to drop any image or any masks in at the moment. You can see here we can play around with the width, the height, the number of outputs. I'm going to leave that as is for now. And I'm going to click Submit. And you can see there the model is running. And we get our output image, which is quite good, I think. So this is how you run the SDXL model in Replicate itself. But we obviously want to do this within our bubble app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my bubble app here. 
and the first thing I'm going to do is drop in a group element. This is going to be the main container that's going to house both our inputs and our outputs. So I'm going to call this group main container. I'm going to set this as a column for now, but I'm going to change that in a minute. We'll set the min width to be 300 and we'll leave the max width unbounded. We won't fit out the content and I will put on some padding just to give us a bit of space. And then I'm going to start dropping in input fields just like we have here. So let's first of all drop in a text element here and we'll call this prompt. And we will do some brief formatting of this as well. And then we can copy that for our other elements on the page. So we'll do that. And let's just edit the style we're using for our body here. Change this to space mono, which is quite a nice font for something like this. And then we're going to put an input box for the prompt. So I'm going to put in a multi-line input just because our prompts can be quite long. So again, we'll change this. We will change the background color to be a flat color. We'll make it this kind of slightly gray color like that. And we'll set the text color. We can leave that as is. And we'll once again, put in space mono as our font. Go back here, undo the fixed width, 300. And we'll set the min height here to be maybe, yeah, I think 100 should be fine. And we'll leave it like that. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to group the two of these together in a column element. And we'll put a bit of space between them. So we'll apply gap spacing between elements, put in a gap spacing of 20. So I think you can probably see where I'm going here. We're going to do a very similar thing for all of the other input fields here. So let's do that now. We'll call this group prompt. And I'm going to come back to some of the other ones, but let's do negative prompt very quickly. We'd also like some spacing between these, so let's click on the main container itself. Click on apply gap spacing between elements and put that at maybe 20. And we'll change this to a single line input. And we'll reduce the height of that. You can see here the formatting hasn't come across. I'll deal with that in a minute. And we can just change that to negative prompt. Okay, so that's kind of in theory how we're going to build out all these inputs here. I'm not going to show you how to do every one just because it would get a bit boring to watch, but I'm going to skip ahead. And at the end of this, we'll have a UI that's built out in this fashion. Okay, so I've finished building out that UI. You can see here I have a mixture of input elements, file uploaders, and then also some drop downs for things like the number of outputs we want. And it's pretty similar to what's on this replicate UI here. So I've basically taken this and built it into my own bubble app. Now you will notice that if I click on the master group here, which I called group input, I am only setting the width of this to be 50% of the entire main container. What this will allow me to do is to put in another container on the right hand side here where we can house our images. So I'm going to do that now. And in fact, the easiest thing sometimes is if I just copy this and paste it in. And then if we just change the type of container layout to be a row for a main container, you can see we now have our two uh, groups side by side. Let's put a bit of a gap in between them, say 40 pixels. And then we can change this to be instead of input, we'll have this as the output. And what we're going to want is we can delete all these groups here because we don't need them. And what we can put in is we can put in a group that is going to house the image. So let's grab another group here, put that in there, get rid of our submit button. And we'll call this one group placeholder image. And we'll just change the dimensions on this. And we're going to, let's just make it a fixed width and height for now. We'll do 500 by 500, fixed height. And then we're going to put an image within here. So let's grab an image element from here. 
and we'll leave that is for now. We'll just untick these boxes here so it takes up the full width of the group. And you can see there it's taking up the full width. And in fact, let's set a placeholder element here just so we have something to look at. So I'm going to grab one of these images and I'll put that in there as a static image. And let's see how this looks. We're making progress. We haven't actually run anything yet from Bubble, but we have the UI nearly complete. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. The next we're going to do is we're going to want to generate a prediction in Bubble that's going to create uh, an image using the SDX model on Replicate, and then we're going to send it back to our Bubble app so we can view it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Submit button here, and we're going to add a workflow to it. And because we've installed the Replicate AI and ML Models plugin, what we'll have access to under this workflow is a bunch of actions. So you can see here we have three create prediction actions and three get prediction actions. There may be more by the time you install this plugin as I'm adding them quite regularly. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a prediction SDXL. And there's a bunch of fields here that we need to fill in. And we're going to use our various input boxes and uploaders here to fill out these fields. The very first one is a prompt. So this is the text that we're going to send to replicate that will create the image. So we're going to go to input prompt value. That's this input here. For image, we're going to say uploader img its value. And then this is really important. You need to put a URL in here. So what's going to happen is we can upload an image to that image uploader. That'll go in there. We want to access this, but we must put in that URL field at the end in order for this to work. Very similar for the mask field here. What we're going to say is we're going to say uploader mask its value and then again its URL. Super important there. Height, uh, we have a number of predefined options here. I'm going to leave them as is for now. I'm only going to do a one output, but you can do up to four at the same time. Negative prompt. So these are things that you do not want to appear in the image. So if, for example, you're trying to create this picture of a spaceman on a unicorn, but you didn't want the moon in the background, you would type in moon to negative prompt. So let's just do input negative prompt, its value. Number of inference steps. Uh, this is kind of relating to the quality of the image. The more steps you take, the higher quality image, but the longer it will take and the bigger the cost will be as well. I'm going to leave this as the input number of inference steps value. And then guidance scale, you can see here from the documentation, you can look up and replicate exactly what this does. But again, we're just trying to fill out the prompts. We're just trying to fill out the fields, I should say, that are relating to the various inputs. And then seed. So if you leave this blank, you're going to use a random seed. Again, you can read more about this on Replicate. Um, some good information in this section here in API. It'll actually go through kind of exactly what all these fields mean. Um, but I'm just going to do input seed its value. Okay, so let's do this now. We're going to try and create a new prediction on Bubble. Do not expect anything to change here right now, but we should see this prediction. And prediction is a replicate kind of term. We should see our prediction come through on our dashboard here. So keep an eye out for that. And let's go to one of our other prompts. I'm going to go back to the spider one that I showed in the intro. We'll paste that in. And we'll leave all them like that click submit you can see something is happening up here and if we go over to our replicate dashboard and we click on refresh you'll see that we created a new prediction two seconds ago and it's currently running and if we click into it you'll see that it's nearly complete and that's our output so we've now generated a prediction from bubble and sent it to replicate but of course, the trick is we want to send this back to Bubble so we can view it on the screen. So we're going to do some database configuration here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data type and I'm going to call it prediction. And I'm going to create a few fields on this. The first one is going to be ID, which will be the unique identifier we're going to use to identify the various predictions. I'm going to put in a field called status, which again will be a text field. And then most importantly, I'm going to put in a field called output, which is going to be a bunch of images. So we'll put a field type as image, but then we're also going to tick it. So next time we click the submit button, what we're also going to do is we're going to create a new thing. And the thing we're going to create is a prediction. And we're going to set the ID to be equal to the result of step one, its ID. So let's try that one more time. I'm going to get a new prompt that might be 
useful. So this time around, let's put in this prompt here, which is dramatic portrait of a man. And the idea here is to use a kind of Grand Theft Auto style uh, theme and apply that to that portrait. So let's click on submit. And again, you can see something happened. And if we go back to our replicate dashboard, you'll see here that's running and it's still running at the moment. But importantly, if we look into our bubble database, what we should see is we've created a new ID. And if we go back to, if we take a look at this ID, you'll see it starts with AOUY. And if we go into replicate, you can see here AOUY, that is the ID of the prediction. So we're matching what's up here with what's in our bubble database. And you can see here that we do have our nice image output. So there's two ways we can get this image to come back into our bubble app. And we essentially want to fill out this output field here with the image. And you would have noticed earlier when we were going through the various fields that are available or the various actions that are available with the Replicate AI and ML Models plugin, we have these other actions that are called get prediction. And these are essentially used to return a prediction from Replicate to Bubble. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to call this result. I'm not going to clone it from anything. We'll create that. Quickly set the layout here to be a contain to be a, a column. And then importantly, I'm going to set the type of content on this page to be prediction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an image element and drop that there. And I'm going to set the dynamic image here to be equal to current page predictions output first item so we're getting the first piece of output in this field here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to say on page load we're going to run that get prediction sdxl and the prediction id is going to equal to current page predictions id so what we're doing is we're going to in a second send a prediction to this page we're going to use this id to load in the output and then we're going to be able to display that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my index page and now instead of just creating a new prediction and then saving down the database i'm going to navigate to the result page and i'm going to send the prediction that we created in step two so let's try that again i'm going to use the same prompt as last time this time i'll just do a woman instead of a man and we'll do that, click on submit. And you can see here, we're creating a prediction. We have the ID in the result page, but nothing is showing up. And the reason nothing is showing up is because at the moment, if we go back to our dashboard, the prediction is still running. Replicate hasn't had time to actually complete the prediction before we called it in bubble. And you can see it's created now. So what it should happen is now if I click refresh, we should be able to run this call, but we also need to save the prediction down to our database. So if I refresh, I should be able to successfully run this call now because Replicate has created the image. But what I need to do is I need to make changes to a thing. I need to make change to the current page's prediction. And for output, I'm adding in the result of step one. And you can see here a bunch of different fields that we can add in. I'm gonna choose output. So now I'm hoping when I click refresh, I'm going to run that API call again. I'm going to update my database. And as a result, we should get our output here. So this does work now. One thing you're going to have to deal with, and this is the easier method, and we'll come across another way in a minute to avoid this. But at the moment, if we click submit, we're straight away going to the result page. And the image is not going to load straight away. We can even show that one more time. If we go back to our index page, We'll click on this, run the same prediction again, click submit. We're creating the prediction in replicate, but again, it's not going to be showing on this page straight away because we haven't had time to do so. If we just wait for replicate to finish that prediction, which it looks as though it has now, and then we refresh our page, it's going to come up. So one way you can do this is if you go back to your index page, before going to page result, 
you can add a pause before the next section. You'll need to play around with exactly how long you need the pause to be. So I'm just going to put in 8,000 milliseconds here. And then if we go back to our index page and paste in the same prompt, once again hit submit. You'll see this time it's taking much longer because we have that pause in there. But then when we go to our result page, it looks as though it still hasn't had time to load. If we wait another second or two, it does. So let's just show you exactly how that can work. We'll put in 12,000 milliseconds instead. And we'll go back, paste in our prompt one more time, and click Submit. And this time, because we gave it enough time to load, it did come true. That is not ideal from a UI perspective, having that big pause. And I would also ideally like to be able to see the output image here rather than on a separate page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this image. And I'm also going to paste it into this group here. And that hasn't worked out particularly well because I should have been copying the group there. I realized. So let's copy that group. And we will paste this in here. Yeah, and now we have two, you can see. So let's put this one, let's clear this image. And then let's also put this down beneath the other one. Or let's put this up higher, I should say. Yeah, so that's what we want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to again create a prediction in Bubble, send it to Replicate, and then we're going to use a webhook to send the image back to Bubble. So webhooks are a way of when Replicate is finished running the prediction, it's going to send a message to Bubble, which will then automatically update the database. We're then going to display that image in this second empty image group here, hide the first one, and we should have it all working on the same page. So in order to get our webhook set up, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the settings tab of your bubble editor, go to API and tick this enable workflow API and back in workflows. I will note you do need to be on a paid bubble plan to access this feature. Once you tick this box, you're going to see your drop down menu under here. You've access to a new section called backend workflows. If you click on that and then click here to add a backend workflow, we're going to create a new API workflow. We're going to call this get SDXL prediction. And I'm going to tick these first two boxes here. We're then going to change this parameter definition field from manual definition to detect request data. And once I click on that, what you're going to see is we're presented with a URL. And this URL is essentially the endpoint that we're got the webhook is going to send the data to. Now, this is where things get a bit more technical in the sense that we do need to initialize this webhook. There are some third party services that make this super easy. Unfortunately, with Replicate, there's a couple of extra steps that we need to do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use a third party service called Postman to initialize our webhook. You can sign up to Postman for free. It is free for what we need today to refer to pay tiers, which we don't need. But once you have signed up, you can then click on the sign in button. You'll then have access to this workspaces area. Now, I already have a workspace, it's called My Workspace. This may come by default with your Postman account, or you may need to go to workspaces and create a new workspace. But once you have done that, click on your workspace and you'll be presented with this area here. Now, this is where we're going to create the initial API call that's going to trigger our webhook. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to click on HTTP. And I'm going to change this from get to post. I'm then going to paste in this URL. I'm going to put this in the description below. You can see here it's pretty straightforward, apireplicate.com slash v1 slash predictions. But like I said, this will be in the description below. Then we need to add some authorization. And we're going to use a very similar system as to what we used when we were initially configuring the Replicate plugin. We're going to change the type of authorization to API key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type authorization in the key box. We're going to put token and a space in the value. 
and then we're going to go back to our dashboard get that api token that we had originally and paste it in there then we have one more step to do before we initialize our webhook and that is in the body section here we're going to need to paste in the parameters that we're going to send via the api call to replicate to trigger this webhook and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take raw here and then i'm going to change this text to json this means we can paste raw json into this field here and that will give the parameters that's needed to postman so i'm conscious this is getting quite technical so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the relevant json again down in a link in the description below it's also going to be the documentation that comes with this particular plugin and in fact if we go back to the account and we can go back to that if we go back to the plugin page for the replicate plugin and if we click on the documentation the json you need is actually going to be here if we click on stxl and then go down to webhooks this is the json you need for the stx model so i'm literally just going to copy all of this go back to my postman page paste that in and you'll see i kind of have a default prompt in there this can be anything you want i just happen to be creating prediction of rafael natal at the time but the one thing we do need to change is we need to put the webhook completed url in here and the way we get that is if we go back to our backend workflow and click on that detect data button this is the url that we need to put in there so i'm going to copy that i'm going to go back to postman and i'm going to take this and paste it in there and now we're ready to initialize our webhook so at the moment we have this pop-up with url being presented but if we click on send and we can see here that this particular webhook has been successful or at least it's been initialized if we go back to our bubble editor you'll see now we're getting all this data coming in and this is the kind of parameters that will be sent back from replicate to bubble when a prediction has been created you can click save on this and then what we're going to do is we're going to say okay every time a prediction is completed and replicate sends a message to bubble we're going to do two things the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make changes to a thing we're going to do a search for a prediction i'm only going to change the first item but it has to be a prediction where and i'm going to add in a constraint here it has to be a prediction where the id is equal to the message that's coming back from replicate which is there's request data and its id so we're searching through our database and we're trying to find a prediction where our id matches the id is coming back from replicate and then we're going to change two fields in here the first one is going to be the output field and this is going to we're going to click add and we're going to click request data and its output and then we're going to change as well status equals request data status there's a bunch of other fields there you can put in if you like and then finally what we're going to do is the second thing i mentioned we're going to change is we're only going to run this when the prediction has been completed you would have seen earlier that you know it takes a while for predictions to run sometimes so i'm only going to run this back end work for when request data's status is succeeded which is a message that replicate will send when the prediction has finished so this is good at the moment now we are going to create a prediction in bubble it's going to be sent to replicate the model will be run and then we just need to do one more thing to send this back and ensure that everything's working well and that is if we go back to the url address that we've copied in here we need to copy that go to our plugin section and then add in under webhook url stxl dev we need to change this to delete the initialize at the end because we've already initialized our webhook we don't need that anymore just for your own knowledge when you're deploying this to live mode you're also going to want to paste this url up here but you want to do it without the version test so if i paste that in there and delete the version test that'll be what's needed when this is going into live production mode okay so pretty happy with that let's see if this works as we intended so we'll preview that and at the moment when we click on this submit button we're creating a prediction in replicate we're creating our own database entry we're adding a pause and then we're going to that page result we no longer need to do that because what's going to happen now is and let's preview this and let's paste in one of our prompts again I'm going to go with butterfly this time rod and spider we paste that in and we click on submit what we should see in our database is if we go into it we'll see at the moment 
that there's nothing in this output field but if we give it a minute and wait for that prediction to run we should see you can see that succeeded runs on 12 seconds go back into our database refresh that you'll see there we're seeing an image and we're seeing a succeeded status so we can see we have our butterfly image there so if you want to display this maybe on your actual home page what you could do is you could once the prediction has been created you could hide the existing image which would be the group behind this group placeholder image and it should be group resulting image you could hide placeholder image group then you could show or sorry you don't need to show if it was already on the screen what you could do is you could display data in a group or pop-up and the element would be group result image and you wanted the data to display to be the result of step two its prediction you will need to change the type of data that's in this so we select first parent again change the type of content in the parent group here to be prediction and then we're going to say the dynamic image in here is going to be parent groups predictions output first item so let's try that one more time paste that in there and again instead of butterfly this time Let's go with something else, an insect maybe. Um, let's click submit. So the prediction has been created. You can see that image there has now gone. What you could do here is put in some sort of loader image that displays while the image is being created on replicate. And you can see there our image has come in. What I should have done is collapse the height of the group up here. But that's how you get it show up on the same screen. The last thing I want to go through is this image and this mask field. We already saw the demonstration of this in the intro, but I just want to go over again what exactly these fields do because they are quite useful. So I'm just going to go to my downloads here and I'm going to click on two images. We have this file here called mask and we have this file here called colorful bear. And what we're going to try to do with this specific set of images is we're going to take this bear image, we're going to transform it to a picture of a colorful cat and what we're going to do with this mask image here is this is going to tell replicate that we only want to change the area that's in the white circle here so everything in a black area is going to remain as it is but we're going to change the face of this bear to a cat by specifying that it's just the image area within this circle that needs to be changed so let's go back to our demo and one thing i'm actually going to do is you might remember a second ago i didn't collapse this image when it was hidden so we'll do that just so we can get the full benefit of the output being on the same page. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that image to the image field here. So I'll go to our downloads, upload that to image. We'll upload our mask to the mask field. So again, we'll go down here, go to our mask image, put that in there. And then I'm just going to change this prompt to a portrait of a colorful cat. And then I'm going to hit submit. So you can see here the model is being run in the background. And our first image has disappeared. And our output image has appeared here. And you'll see here it's still not up at the top of the page. And the reason is I should have ticked on the parent group, which is here. I should have ticked here, collapse when hidden. So let's just try that one more time. Refresh that. Go back to a portrait of a colorful cat. Upload our bear image. Upload our mask image. And click submit. See the model has been run in the background. Our initial image and group has been hidden. And then when the model has generated the image of the colorful cat, it's going to spit it out on the page here and hopefully up at the top underneath output and you can see there that's where it comes so that's it for this tutorial hope it's been useful if you do have any questions you can let me know in the comment section